as the, both games kind of going underway here. Fortnite's going to be moving again. Sure, the Saints were in the sweet spot before. Not going to be the case anymore. They're going to have to rotate. And then for the side of TFT, seems like Tommy is in pretty solid position. Okay, and I definitely saw that. I definitely saw that wrong, at least unless that was someone else who he was spectating. That might have been the case. Yeah, that might have been the case, uh, because if we look at it here... No, I was wrong. Okay, so Tommy, I don't believe, is actually running the Bruiser Synergy. I don't. I can't see exactly, just because the letters are a little too small to read out there. But I do know that he has three Synergies down. There we go, we're going to see them. So, he is not playing for the Bruiser Pentakill. He instead, right now, has Guardian, Sentinel, and True Damage active as his three Synergies so far. That's, or rather, that might be what's active for him right now. But as we did kind of see in his shop, he does have the opportunity to maybe level up a couple of those Pentakill uh, characters up to the two-star. The Mordekaiser is mm. going to be leveled up here, which, of course, can still be used in the Guardian, like, Sentinel true damage combo like Tommy's going for. It doesn't have to say strictly into the Pentacle side of things. But... Uh, I think as we saw him kind of flicking around, there was at least one or two other people that were going pentakill. So that may have been the initial plan, but it does seem like he is starting to pivot over to maybe an EDM style. It seems like right now, as we look into Fortnite, the circle is getting so small. Can Teo find another snipe? No, just barely missing by a couple of pixels onto the player. And that would have surely been the end for that player there. So right now, they kind of find themselves boxed up. Let's look at the mat numbers right now. That is not looking good. I see that Teo has 410 wood, but he only has 140 steel, I want to say, and three brick. Not even enough to place a solid brick mat. So right now, if I'm the Saints, you want to try to get a couple of picks here, but you do not want to oh. get into build fights. Could he have found oh. the snipe? There may be, but opting to play it a little bit safe. Just doesn't want to exactly commit to something that he doesn't know he can't 100% hit. And right now as the player walks across the bridge, uh, so across close. the roof, he's so close. They need to try to find a couple of these snipes, though. There's and one. there's going to be one right there. Interesting how Teo, it seems like almost the harder the shot gets, the more accurate he is. <laughs> and St. Clair needs to find a couple of these quick picks and a couple of these quick damage dealing shots because with the mats that they have right now... Oh, that's concerning. Yeah, it just doesn't look like they're you know, in a great place for a build fight. And we did see Teo actually drop the sniper. He's completely out of sniper rifle ammunition as of this moment, if I do recall correctly. Looking a little bit so, better on mats now. They're probably just trying to find a way to evenly distribute them yeah. amongst both players. I would imagine that would be the strat. So now, Teo, you and guys it. have the mats for an engagement, <laughs> but you have to do it quick. You do not have the mats for a late style push and with 20 people remaining this is such a ballsy rotate even going into the storm for a bit oh they're dead center though yeah and they're kind of play style because they've ran out of ammo in regards to snipers they do have to be a little bit more close qu uh, quarters sure they have a little bit of assault rifle ammunition so they don't have to necessarily be point blank but the long-range picks that they were kind of going for before are no longer going to be I'm, in effect here. I'm just noticing right now as well, does Teo have any meds on him? I think if I can see the fifth slot that he does have, I believe, is a med kit, uh, just because of the little green outline. But I'd now, imagine just having same, at least one. But, but, you know, no shields is a little bit concerning. Maybe they're minis, but either way, to have one or the other and not both is a little bit concerning if you are on the side of the Saints. <laughs> Looking for that next rotation into Storm. They have the grappling hooks that they can use to get over there quickly, but it's going to be a very dire situation very quickly if St. Clair can't start to find oh. a couple of picks for some mats of their own. Teo, do you see the player just down below, right below your crosshairs, sitting by, able to find a couple shots onto the first guy, even going as so far to almost crack shields, but now the rotation needs to come in, and this is where things are going to start getting a oh, little bit hectic. Go. Yep, here we go. Is it going to be basically trying to invade somebody else's building here? But all we have is wood to try and defend ourselves. But we're currently basically right on the outskirts of where that safe zone will be traveling to. A lot of the players are going to have to come towards us. So this is going to happen quickly whenever it does end up going down. Going to end up using the grappling hook. Just again, such basically a sweet, fast rotate. <laughs> yep, just taking somebody else's building and basically making a basement for ourselves right below it here. Getting a little bit of chip damage. And to be fair, the Saints have done so much damage to other players, but not necessarily as many eliminations as I'm sure they deserve. 
the way that someone's going through. A couple of more shots towards someone's shield, but not enough to really take him down here. No health damage. And home Mateo's going smokes. really aggressive He's here. absolutely going in deep. With the players around him just editing around, trying to find uh -oh. a couple of pixels of a movement of movement just so he can try to pop some damage onto some of these remaining teams through the builds is going to find about 32, finding another 16 as well on shields, but in the long run, they need to just keep on playing for rotation after rotation. The grappling hooks aiding them in that so heavily, and with that tool in pocket, you have to hope that Mateo and company, or Teo and company, sorry, can just try to keep safe and keep on the move. Absolutely, and just being able to kind of zip around like that, does make it nice, and oh no, Unknown got caught out on the outside. He has been knocked down. Will probably get eaten alive here by the storm. I don't see a world where Teo can actually go save him now. He might make the attempt. He's right on the outside of the building, no, but I don't think not. he's got surely enough not. time, enough space to make it happen. Gonna dive on through it, or somebody right below him. Gonna take to the cliff, takes a little bit of damage for his troubles, but he does manage to get out alive. And right now they're just simply playing for placement, right? But with the enemy staring down, you gotta oh, find a pick. pick! That's a huge pick on the side of Teo. Can he reposition though? The storm eating away at that health, the grappling hook coming alive, finding the catch onto the cliff side. And now he can just kind of wait and burn time, finding shots onto one player, almost cracking shields as well. I believe he actually might have. And right now, Teo, oh a fight onto the next. Can he find the pick? Yes, he can. He's an absolute fire, but on one shot, he has to try to play very, very close and very safe here to this mountain. That was he a has the high ground. He does have a med kit that is going to be potentially a game winner for him late game. How many are left, though? It doesn't seem like too many. And here's that big tower, that big level of builds that you can see around with the player in the open space. He's going to find the kill, and he's going to find the victory royale with the final one. The med kit was the game-changing play. And off of the back of what was a very skeptical first week or last week uh, performance, that has got to have the boys feeling hyped up there. Absolutely. That's exactly what they needed. Sure, Unknown ended up going down, but it was so far into the round that it was probably like okay it worked out and being able to have so much mobility that they had still had the health pack available as well sure it got a little bit dicey but he uh, tail found the opportunity got the grappling hook dove in and was able to secure the kill before i think the opponent even knew that he was really I mean, there that was, that was amazing solo duo and he's going to pick up like what was that four in the span of like a minute that was nuts and yeah like that was absolutely wild the only reason I honestly didn't even get more hype than I did is just because I'm just so tired from today already. It's been a hey, long day. You. And with Siege as well, it's just such a huge cast. So an absolutely brilliant play by Teo and the boys. And uh, wow, I mean, what a turnaround. Yeah, fantastic way to finish off the ECAC Fortnite for tonight. Our last matchup now, of course, is our ECAC team fight tactics Tommy and taking first. a look yeah Tommy in turn regards of health is sitting pretty at the top of the lobby trying to take a look at what he's actually going for it is so diverse that it's actually not necessarily a bad thing if you're managing to win your round still you have a lot of time if you're not necessarily committing to anything but we now kind of see in his planner what he's possibly thinking about going for and it is going to be Trying to think off the top of my head what it would have ended up being. I, that was not KDA. It was something different, I do think. Yeah, you have to assume late game he might dive into one or a couple of synergies just to kind of boost them up a little more. Because he's playing into what I believe is seven so far. So a little bit of a... He's got a piece of everything kind yeah, of going on right? here. Yeah, right? Like just a little bit of everything. But no necessarily big strong spot. He just kind of has coverage on everything imaginable. Mm -hmm. So, you know... I ask because, oh. of course, I'm not a huge TFT player. Would you say that, like, this is okay for Tommy? Or if you are Tommy right now, looking at... I just found it. Yes. Right at the very back line, that is a Tier 5 unit that is a Ziggs. So that is a legendary unit for Hyper Pop. And that... He, as you can see, he's got a bunch of items stacked on top of it as well. He is going to make sure that this Ziggs is going to be a massive AoE damage dealer as this round goes on. If left alone, this guy gets nasty. But you have to make sure the front line in front of you can stay alive. And it does look like there's that one unit up ahead kind of it. charging through. 
that is actually just tanking everything and it's letting the Ziggs do so much damage and actually I think I understand now why Tommy's so far ahead here the Guardian's keeping everybody it's as if he kind of knows what I'm talking about when <laughs> but of course he's on a or he's three minutes ahead of us and whatnot but highlighting over the Guardian just using a bunch of traits that would actually help keep him alive and then Ziggs basically has synergy with himself just having the one hyper pop does give you a bonus in its own right so Everything else is just gravy. Just keep that Ziggs alive. Seems to be the name of the game. And, I mean, the way you're describing it, I like what I'm hearing. It seems like Tommy is kind of has, like, a secure hold on what he wants to do. He is still in first, of course. We do have that player in second who is close and on a win streak right now. But as Tommy gets into these later fights, it is going to be very interesting to see just how big of a role this Ziggs does have. It doesn't take very long for it to get its ability up either. You see that big pink purplish uh, gl uh, bomb, the big old like circle getting tossed out. Once it hits, it then splashes over to the other units. So it destroys one really, really badly and just spreads the damage. But as the tank this line is going down, this is, where here, things, yes. this is where things start to get a little bit nasty when you have something with maybe a little bit more consistent solo target damage like that team was. I think that was a Keelan and a Gwen at one point that was just able to kind of shred Tommy down. So he's going to take a hit. A very small hit, however, because that round was so close. There's not as many units on the board, so there's not much damage going into the... or going up against Tommy. And he's been able to upgrade his Sentinels, which means he's upgrading his front line. They're beefier, which in turn lets the damage go nuts. Right, and I mean, it's worth noting as well, still staying in first, I believe that player in second also lost their winning streak, so they're going to go down in total health as well. And uh, right now, it's just going to be interesting to see. If you are Tommy, <clears throat> you clearly have the play. It has been identified by you, Mr. Danners. And now, we just have to wait and see what these matchups look like. As the current standings sit right now, if this Ziggs can just be allowed to kind of go crazy... What are we looking at in terms of health-wise where Tommy should end up? Do you see, like, probably a confirmed top three finish, if you d uh, don't mind saying so yourself? Or do you think it's still in a stage of the game where anything could happen? He should be sitting pretty for maybe the next couple of rounds. However, he's still going to need to find some upgrades on some of these other units because they're still Tier 1 at this point. And all those Tier 1 units, even if they are Sentinel, sure, they'll tank a little bit, but they're not going to be able to hold out as long as possible. And we can see with some of these other teams that do have abilities that can breach through that front line, the Ziggs does end up going down, and Tommy's not going to have all day to really build that front line up. There are people that are going to be able to mess with his zigs so he needs to find some additional units to try and hold that front line a little bit stronger otherwise that lead is going to go away very quickly and dropping down to second you have to imagine right you just said it upgrading front line is the name of the game but if he can't do so do you see him still having the time to kind of kind of rejig his lineup and focus into some sort of different comp or do you think it's a little too late and he has to really sort of start to commit to this hold? Once some of these players actually start getting eliminated, that does take the champions that they've used and throw them back into the store, the market, into right. the pool. So if somebody is running something that maybe will kind of counteract what one of the t uh, players that are maybe beating him are doing, he could very well opt to hard swap, but that is a very, very risky move to try and do. If anything, I feel like he's going to try and, as this this goes through, just try to keep leveling himself up as he gets maybe a little bit more gold and try to maybe find a couple more zigs. If you can get a tier 2 zigs, that's just so much more damage on the board as well. But again, you have to also worry about your tank line. And the Alawi that he just picked up is also another tier 5 unit but one of his other opponents were using it so this could very well just be a move to take it off the board no he is actually going to opt to use it himself so uh, not only does the allow we have a, some decent damage and taking this for herself but you can see the tentacles on board as well that is just more bodies that have to be dealt with by the opponent to get to the back line right and so far we have seen these last couple of rounds the back line has, or the front line has been getting abused and outclassed. However, we will see if these changes that he has made are necessary. 
As this battle goes down, though, I must say I don't like how it's looking at first glance. Yeah, and the Ziggs actually just got obliterated there by the Ezreal on the side of uh, Titan's opponent here. So with so much damage off the board already, this is starting to fall really bad now. As not only are these losing rounds, but these are losing rounds that are decisive. So these are taking big chunks out of his health pool. But it's down to the carousel here. Can we find an item or can we find a tanky member to kind of... Oh, there's actually a Ziggs there as well. That would be... Just amazing if they could pick it up, but because Tommy's in second, he is going to be the second last one to go, and sure enough, somebody steals it right off the board, not going to let him have it. Right, and I wonder if they even almost notice that because he's playing into that zig so much, just to kind of steal that away. 100%. Tommy right now, you know, just playing the strategy of what's just next, what's best, and what did he pick up off the carousel there if you caught that, Dan? Did not quite get it off the top here. Going to quickly try and see. Probably just going to end up being sold off. No... Is that a Gwen? I'm not 100% sure just by looking at it, unfortunately. Of course, the no uh, Team Fight Tactics does use all of the skins that the characters are for that theme, so don't necessarily know right off the first glance half the time. But with the Ziggs being off the board because of the carousel, that's also going to be a Ziggs that's off the board in the shop. So as if those Tier 5s were, weren't hard already enough hard to enough find. to find, like we see in the, the very bottom left there, like, Trying to find a legendary is 3%, let alone finding these zigs inside of that 3% is tough enough as is, but knowing there's one less one in the store is going to be painful. But this is now going to be the part where some of these players at the very, very bottom are going to start getting eliminated, and maybe a hard swap could be a, a, a possibility. But we are seeing these players that have been able to find their tier threes, like this Jinx here, are really starting to do some damage, but he's going to hang on by a thread, That's actually. Huge. Just hangs on by a thread, the tentacles, and the one champion left to get the job done. Right, but you just wonder, he needs to have, it seems like, a little bit of an upgrade on this front line. They just seem to be getting obliterated almost instantaneously, just kind of outmatched. And I wonder if that is just because of the fact that when playing for that Ziggs, you do commit so much into the one champion that you do end up a little bit staggered in the front line. If I'm incorrect, then that's on me. But it seems like for sure that that is like what I can pick up so far. If you are Tommy, you just kind of gonna you just gotta kind of hope that some of these lower health players will soon eliminate each other out of the mix just to kind of play for placement absolutely and there is one thing to kind of analyze as this fight is going down is tommy still sitting on 52 gold so he's getting maximum amount right, of he does have a lot of yeah, maximum amount amount of interest so he's getting his the most amount of gold you can per round in the game regardless of if you win or uh, or lose or if you lose you get the max but if you or excuse me if you win, you get the maximum. But now is probably the Oof. time. He's got so much in his pocket that he could either try to level up to level 9 or just start rolling. Because we're up against a dragon and not another player, I think we're going to wait. What items is this dragon going to give us? Because right now, with how Tommy has built, he's built himself into a corner where he's got all this magic damage. So if he is going to have to switch something, it has to be magic related unless the dragon can give him something juicy. And we'll see soon enough how that is going to turn out for him as we see that that dragon should not be giving him many problems, obviously, at this stage of the game. It's kind of like a freebie. So let's see, what did he end up and, uh, picking okay, up? Okay, he gets to choose out of something. He'll eventually throw that anvil aside, and now we are going to actually see. He's just picking up every legendary he can. That was a Sona, a Kiana as well. Not necessarily stuff that's going to combine with what he's doing, but he did also level up to level 9. So all the gold is spent. He's got the maximum amount of champions that he can on the board. Hyper Pop level 2 as well. So his Ziggs, while it is still tier 1, it has a partner. It has synergy. So it does level up that ability ever so slightly more. But you gotta assume it's all absolute. or nothing. He's gonna just put all these items on the board, correct? Yeah, I don't think he's in range. We're losing, like badly will kill him but it's going to make it so he's basically two rounds from death yeah and again that front line just evaporating before our very eyes it seems like onto the back line too it's just going to be the same story what does that kill taking some it does. damage wow. is going to kill and that is going to be tommy finding himself fourth. at fourth yep. place all right so just unfortunately had a solid mid game finding the zigs early and building into the zigs 
did let him kind of roll through a lot of that uh, that mid game and earlier uh, late game, but something just kind of fell through. Whether the opponents that uh, Tommy was going up against had the units that maybe he would have wanted for his front line, so he was just not finding it in the shop. Because you do kind of think that uh, like one of the odd things you may want like tier two or tier two, tier three, maybe even tier ones as your tanks sometimes. But as you level up more and more, the percentage of you actually finding those lower tier units in your shop does actually decrease. You start finding more threes and fours, maybe a five here and there. And then the tier ones and twos just kind of like disappear to the wayside. So it gets really, really awkward the longer you kind of level up. And if you were relying on a tier two, for example, to be one of your tanks, uh, you might have like missed your opportunity. And unfortunately there for Tommy, had some damage, but just could not survive. Right, I mean, not horrible placement. I mean, obviously six places a little bit on the lower end of the scale, but then finding the fourth, you know, he kind of has himself a little bit of a middle ground. Hopefully some of our other TFT players, like Pitsy, for example, were hopefully able to do just a little bit better on the side there. But I don't think I'm really scared for Tommy because we did yeah. see on that on that leaderboard so far that before entering today, he was fourth, I believe, on that leaderboard. Absolutely. like the, Sure, the sixth kind of hurts a little bit, but the fourth isn't too bad to say the least. And there's still plenty more weeks of ECAC teamfight tactics to go. And now for the finale here, we have one more time with a Fortnite matchup here. I guess it's actually three rounds of Fortnite instead of two. So that was my mistake. It was the TFT that I was thinking it's only the two games. So, one more time, let's drop on into our favorite location here and loot things up, mess with the NPCs once again, and see if we can find ourselves another W. Right, and I mean, electing to go to Lavish again, this definitely is now without a shadow of a doubt, uh, or sorry, without a shadow of a doubt, um, definitely the favorite location if you are uh, Teo and Unknown. So... It is just going to be same thing, same old, same old early game. Let's just farm mats. He has the sniper already that he had, I believe, last time. Just has to upgrade it now. And, I mean, honestly, I'm so down to watch another game in full if Teo's going to be sniping like he was last game. Absolutely. It was very entertaining. And we are seeing some early conflict here with a couple more of these players that are still maybe a little bit late to uh, falling off the bus. But um, no... Uh, major conflict now is going to be able to just worry about looting up and getting as many materials as possible and honestly like based off of that last round the saints did pretty well min max themselves in regards to materials right. they had just enough to kind of get by and then they really started playing kind of invasion just kind of taking over other people's um buildings for the most part but Maybe this time by, if they are able to have a little bit of a quieter game, sure, that could result in maybe a couple less kills. But you may be able to have a couple more, like, steel plates, some additional builds in the pocket for yourself to give yourself maybe a little bit of a better position. But I can't really call it a better position. You won last game. You did exactly what you needed to do. So we'll have to see as we go on through and take out this NPC. Right, as we take out some guards right now, you know, just trying to get a little extra ammo, a little bit extra loot there. It's going to be, actually, it says your location area has been exposed. So I wonder if a player with a reveal now, and we do hear footsteps, I believe engagement might actually be coming through very soon. Yeah, we'll get in that vault and loot as fast as possible in case somebody tries to ambush you here. Maybe we not. I think hear... we're just hearing unknown. <laughs> it's just showing up on the thing, but I could be wrong. I say, I'm seeing a lot on the screen right now in regards to what looks like shots fired, but I'm curious if those squares... No, those are just, just chests. Guards. Those are just so, chests and... Uh, those are just chests, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm getting scared for no reason here, so... Okay, then, yeah, like I said... No, I don't think right. we have anything to worry about. I think those were literally just Unknown's footsteps that were just showing up on uh, Teo's proximity sound alarms. That would so, make sense. Yep, as we try to level up and get put some attachments on that sniper, I mean, man, if we're in for another game of sniping, like I said, I'm excited. So... It's going to be Teo to kind of pimp out that sniper rifle, and I cannot wait. I hope he lands some beautiful crispy shots. Yeah, suppressors and all sorts of grips to try and make that thing even more deadly, because we did just see, like you mentioned, in that last game, it was absolutely ridiculous how many long-range shots he managed to find, but 
Gonna just clean up the rest of this section, get the gold as well, so you can probably upgrade or level up some of your weapons when the time comes. But lots of building going through here. Do they expect somebody to be here? Or nope, just gonna up to farm it up once again. Very, very cautious. Some shots are actually fired. There is actually people here, it looks like. So we could be in for an early fight. Right, going to be interesting to see how the Saints play it. If I were them, yep, exactly. I would just rotate out. I mean, honestly, there's no reason to just commit to such early aggression. And when you do have a sniper rifle, you just want to make nice. some space, finding, leave, you know, just taking off right where he left off uh, from last round. Going to find the 110. And yeah, if you are Teo, you can elect to just kind of make that distance, space yourself out. You do not want to get caught in a build fight, especially with a sniper as your choice of weapon so far. So you do have to think as uh -oh. the engagement comes through close, though, something needs to be found. Like can use the shotgun as you really should. Not looking to go for any no scopes. We're not literally in phase here. We do want to play this smart. And it should be just kind of the backside rotate from Teo. Just cubing up right now, staying close to his teammate and farming some extra mats that he can use. Yeah, in a one on one or two on two rather, like taking a look at the shotgun that Teo does have, it is just a gray. So if all of a sudden they get into a fight and their yeah, opponents have something dodge, better, it space. could be worse. They invested so much into those long range weapons that it would absolutely be foolish, like you were saying, to try and take a close quarters engagement. Do exactly Ooh, so what your play needs to do and grab a car and get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, I, I was honestly saying like, yeah, that's the name of the game right now for Teo and Unknown. They have such investment into those long range weapons, like you said. They really do need to play passive and far back. Just creating space in the fastest way possible is definitely going to be how they can keep themselves alive for a late game finish here. Absolutely, and now they got themselves into the safe zone. I'm gonna take a quick second, maybe see if anybody opens fire on them to try and give themselves a gauge as to where to go to maybe try to loot next time by. But as all seems peaceful for now, they're gonna try and make their way across the bridge. I think there's a gas station or something up ahead that they can maybe take a stop at or just keep trying to get themselves into it. Maybe a very, very isolated position just to loot up on uh, some materials. And as they continue their little joyride, they're probably just going to look to where to rotate, where they want that high ground. I'm assuming that's where they're headed for, especially when you know you have those long range weapons. You just want to kind of play space and play high. So that's going to be exactly what they're sort of going for here though they have something ping not quite sure what it is it is just going to be some ais that they're just going to try to farm some loot off of that works and after this is done i i think the intention is pretty clear here that they're going to probably just kind of keep this high ground in on the edge of zone and just kind of ride everything in and one thing that did just actually pop up on the screen there that's at least new to me but i'm not sure for all those here and at home but being able to get the forecast. So whatever computer or machine they actually went over this tower here, I don't know whether they have it in control or if they just had to get to it at some point during the game. But now they're able to see where the next circles will be, I guess, ahead of, ahead of time compared to other players, which is going to allow them to make those rotates much, much quicker and maybe have their own little fortress set up away before the other players even rotated. Launchpad as well, just right next to that forecast system. So it literally allows for just the quickest rotate. Can Teo try to find a snipe here? He's going to find it down! 275! And now, you know what? Screw this! You have to push that now. With it down on the board, you can get the finish and get the two points. And maybe even clean up the teammate as well and find four for yourself. It's going to be the aggression play coming out here from Teo and Unknown. And as the down is surely to be scooped up soon, they need to try to find the second player. Got There's a confirm, so it is going to be the first two points on the board for them and what a beautiful shot from Teo to just start this execution off honestly part of me would just want to see them kind of like leave at this point here because they're still right, just yeah they have the one on two assuming there's no third party scenario but again they're not built for this close quarters combat so you go in you got your snipe get your kill and get the heck out of dodge if anything it looks like the opponents kind of do that for us because they are going to evacuate out the back door and start crossing the lake so a fantastic job there for the Saints to be able to capitalize off of the snipe. A train actually is going to be in the way here. So get out of Taja there. Don't know if you can get run over by that or not. But a solid job for the Saints to capitalize off that snipe. Dive in on the knocked player. Get the elimination and essentially play safe after that. 
Right, I mean, that's just kind of the name of the game, right? Like, just take your points when you can get them and get out. So that's going to be the name of the game for sure. But I believe they have eyes on what is another player. Yes, they do. Just kind of camped out around that tree. Cubed up right now, probably looking to get out. And that's going to be exactly what happens with the aggressive play as well. Teo, again, just building those stairs, trying to get some high ground, getting through the walls, trying to see if they can maybe double up on a player who might be low or at least lower in combined mats than Teo and Unknown. Jeez. So as the build fight goes down, it should be the vertical angle that they tried to find on him. However, I believe the doubles player just elected to try to get out, but it's not going to happen. Unknown with the cleanup. There we go. And that's going to be another two points going to the Saints. Hey, we got pizza now. There we go. But I wish I had pizza right now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, eh? But uh, <laughs> there we go. So that's going to be one point each for the Saints in terms of elimination. But of course, they're on a team, so it's all going to the same place. Unknown able to clean that one up. And good on the Saints there. They were able to capitalize once again. It seems like maybe that was the alone player from before because they seemed really confident Good that point, that was probably. a... probably. Yeah, they seemed really confident that that was just a one-on-two. So they dove on in, took care of them, and there was absolutely no uh, consequence for doing so. No third party. Found a nice opportunity to get in, get a kill, get some more points and some more loot, and right back to farming. Right, and I mean, let's look, take a look at the mat numbers right now. Looking a whole lot better on the side of St. Clair. It seems like they just need to try to play, again, higher up. And I believe they are actually going to just recover, I think was a beacon right there. It's, it looks like it's just kind of something that you have to stay near as the progression kind of goes up. I don't exactly know what it is, but it seems interesting. <laughs> Yeah, this kind of screams to me like maybe like airdrop supply. I know those used to be a thing, but I don't know if that's still a thing anymore. But whatever it is, it takes forever to try and actually control right on the outskirts of the uh, of the safe zone as well. So they're going to have to move eventually. Storm is making its way through. No, so when you're seeing that fading circle, the forecast system from That's earlier forecast. is telling yep, yep, them yep, yep. two storms in advance. So they're actually okay for right now. Yep, you're right. But even just having that knowledge <laughs> is just so strong. And, I mean, it really just shows that, like, th this is, wow. So, you know oh. what? It is kind of a proximity drop. It's not an airdrop, but it just kind of drops right there. And that is great news to the Saints. They have some shields now. They have some medkits they can elect to take or leave. Doesn't really matter. Maybe Unknown kind of scoops some up. Maybe not. But the whole point is they have more loot. That's the important part. Yeah. And right now, they look to just kind of be sitting pretty. And, yep, they found yet another one. So they'll just kind of be able to – maybe like kind of like a scavenger's contract here. They'll be able to just kind of take some – as they go, but hold on. I think a little bit of a team fight going on right in front of them. It's going to be exactly that. Teo trying to see if he can just find oh, it down. Got it. Here we go again. He got it again. A beautiful shot. And now they're going to pressure yet again on the team. That should be another pickup. So two injures. It's going to be one scooped up as well. And Teo should find the snipe. He's oh going to find gosh. a headshot as well on the quick scope. Absolutely disgusting from Teo and the group. Gosh, like piranhas on a wounded animal. As soon as they sense blood, they swarm. And they have been able to absolutely clutch up not just one, but two eliminations. Hold on, a known has gone down, though. Yeah, a known did end up actually going completely down here. So they aren't going to get out of this one scot-free. They do lose unknown. And there is still at least one, maybe two teams in the vicinity. Saints getting a bunch of an eliminations, but it might have put them in a pickle. Yeah, and this is the th problem, right? Like, you have snipers. I get you want to push on that injury, and you do get the next kill as well. But now you got to be kind of kicking yourself here. The quick edit and the quick shot from Teo is so impressive. But right now, you got to be thinking, how can I get to my teammate's reboot card and get out of dodge? But with the players around him, he kind of seems like he's just kind of stuck. If he tries to make any sort of move, it's probably going to get capitalized on... And as the edit comes through, this is going to be his big move. He needs to try to grab the reboot card and get out safely, just grabbing any mats that he can, grabbing the ammo. I believe he has the reboot card now, and he just needs to get out of dodge. Yeah, he's going to find a couple of recovery items as well. So to be fair now, uh, Teo is extremely loaded in regards to ammo, weapons, healing. He's okay, but it's not going to matter if he gets jumped. So he has to be so careful with this one. And it looks wow. like he's immediately going to find somebody else who is maybe looking for the same kind of plan. I think they're one shot, too. Yeah, that but was it's just so close. 
I think the reboot van was actually used, so it's going to be a whole duo on him now. And if you're Teo, you're oh. in an absolutely tough spot. And it's they, the Saints need to be very glad that they got that first place pickup because finishing 21st is definitely not where you wanted to end up. However, nevertheless, a very entertaining show from Teo. I well, mean, absolutely. just an absolute god with that sniper. And that's going to be the consolation, kind of, with this early exit in the round. Like, sure, 21st, that's a little bit rough. However, that is a bunch of eliminations on the board after making that aggressive maneuver. So it's not like you're going to be going home empty-handed, but does end up kind of falling a little bit short this time by. Ooh, but that was quite the night, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. A fantastic night of Academy Game Day once again. It seems like Thursdays is might as well just be the de dedicated uh, Academy Game Night, and it's probably going to continue to be that way going on next week. We'll probably see the follow-up, of course, with R6, TFT, and Fortnite once again next week. Uh, probably same time, 7 o'clock, and should be another exciting night. But kind of the recap, what kind of uh, matches we saw here, kind of get to go through from the top. Right, I mean, just an absolute dominant show on the side of R6 from Butler University. Got to give the hats off to those guys down there. I mean, it was just an absolute slaughter, uh, especially on the side of two players in Gravy and John C. Mm -hmm. So just amazing performances. If, if somehow you two see this, I just want to say that was an absolutely great performance out of you guys. And we'll look forward to future matchups for sure because I know our Saints definitely are going to take a lot from this matchup and come 100%. back swinging harder than ever. At least I would expect them to. And on the side of Fortnite, obviously, we saw they did end up coming in first uh, on one of their games. 21st mm -hmm. finish on the, on the third game. I don't exactly remember where they ended up on the first first game if yeah. you could help me recollect if yeah you they made remember. it to the ending but it was also at the same time when r6 was just kind of wrapping up so right um they had made it to that ending portion so i'd imagine they're probably within like the top 15 so at the very minimum okay so decent placement for first game absolute best ending you could ever hope for on the second game absolutely and a little bit of questions on the third game but entertaining gameplay it was a fun one absolutely for yeah, sure. yeah 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 <laughs> Probably supposed to some TFT recap, Dan. Yeah, so that TFT, we didn't necessarily see, or we did see the first game. It did end up being a sixth-place position finish there for Nakataiken, but then a fourth-place finish in the second game. Not necessarily, excuse me, not necessarily sure on the rest of the squad. Pitsy, Kira, and Papa Prince were also competing. I did not see them in our lobbies, so we didn't have to do any team kills or anything today. But um, later on, we'll, as we get the the update later on social media maybe we'll take a look and see how they are doing but um don't necessarily have that for you right now right and i mean as we kind of wrap this night up dan do we have anything in store for tomorrow's broadcast we absolutely do so much that i cannot remember it off the top of my head all i know is that we're kind of starting things off with some counter strike we're going to be going up against i believe it's fanshaw in nice star league action followed up with some other ones but i'm going to quickly take a peek in just a moment's time but we have yeah that's exactly what it is okay so thank you production for reminding me but of course call of duty is going to be happening once again it, no cxp so there's not going to be any varsity call of duty but we will see the academy call of duty team playing alongside Academy League of Legends for what I believe is ECAC and possibly Omega Strikers as well, if that match time is still there. I think there's kind of like a pending reschedule. So we'll see what kind of happens there. But at the maximum, another four games in store here and another Academy game day. So should be a, another fun night. Yeah, and I just want to say while we're wrapping this up, um, shout out to our sponsors, mm -hmm. Hyper uh, X, obviously, Subway, Tim Hortons, the SRC alumni, and the, oh man, why can't I remember the last one? I'm blanking. Please help me out, Dan. Last sponsor, please. Am I wrong thinking that you got everything? The SRC and I think like St. Clair alumni, right? Uh, yep. That was yeah, it. so I did say SRC alumni. Okay, 
Yeah. Alumni Association. You got there it. we go. Sorry about that. <coughs> and uh, yeah, and a big thanks to everybody in the back room mm-hmm. as well. I believe I saw Daniil, Amanda. I know Aiden was back there. Yep. And any and Ma- others? And Matthias as well did yes. come back f- right after playing a Smash match. So um, props to him for kind of doing double duty here today. Right. <laughs> but with that being said, I think it is time f- to close on out. Big thank you to everybody for tuning in. What Regardless of which match you're here for, thank you for supporting your friends, classmates, family, whomever it may happen to be in their esports endeavors. Or if it happens to be one of us here on production, thank you for supporting us here with the Saints Gaming CA Twitch channel. Plenty of action still to come. Once again, Patrick, thank you for joining me on the commentary desk. Been an absolute pleasure. And been a while since that last, like, Rocket League qualifier, so it's been a good while. Right. I mean, that was just so crazy. Uh, <laughs> just, we, we don't got to get into it right now because it's not relevant, but that was an absolutely crazy cast, and this has been a very enjoyable one as well. So thank you, Dan, and we will see you guys next time.